Hello everyone, my name is Mike and here at Tech Carmoon we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But today I'm going to be showing you how the MacBook Pro 2020 handles video editing. So let's uncover it right now. So this video is for anyone interested in the new MacBook Pro 2020 and want to see how it performs under video editing. Now the Everyday Dad did do a great video on the base model of how it video edits. but this model that I have here is the upgraded £1800 model which has the 10th generation i5 processor as well as the G7 graphics. So I wanted to see how well this machine video edits for only £1800. Will it be able to handle the 4K video footage that I do on almost a daily basis for not only YouTube, but some of my clients as well? Just to let you know, I will be doing a full review on this machine, as well as some comparisons between this model and the MacBook Air 2020, as well as some other comparisons that I think you'll find interesting. So please give me a like and hit that subscribe button if you wanna watch it. But let's just jump in to the video editing. So right over here, I've got the 4K project that I always Always do. So this is 4K 8-bit footage and this is my test project that you've seen in all my videos. Also on the top here, if you have a look, I've got some of the parameters regarding CPU, the memory, temperature, fan and so on, just so that we can monitor to see what happens as we're playing. So first of all, if we set the performance, uh, the quality, sorry, the playback quality to better performance, let's have a quick look and see how that plays back. So as you can see, absolutely fine. And you probably noticed I've got two layer adjustments over here. So I've got a simple color correction and a LUT as well applied. So, you know, good test to see, you know, average editing. Now that's on better playback. So looks like no issues over there. Now let's check it on better performance and let's see how that plays back. So from what I can see, no drop frames whatsoever. CPU still doesn't look to be used. We can see the GPU jumping up quite a bit. I think the GPU in this is probably its only limiting factor, even though it is 80% better than the base model, according to obviously Apple. But yeah, I'm seeing good playback. Let's just check the transition again no issues just over there. So good to see that we're seeing no issues. Now let's do a quick render test to see what it's like and how quick it renders out this nine minute project. So in terms of the export, I'm gonna do it at H.264 export as this is normally what people export it as uh, to YouTube. So we'll press next and let's save this. So start. Okay, so that took nine minutes and 15 seconds. So I did do this test a couple of times and it got between sort of eight and a half minutes to, to nine minutes. So definitely very, very good performance throughout the rendering. The fan speeds never reached more than sort of 70 to 80%, which is really good to see. The GPU was pretty much maxed out and the CPU usage stayed at around sort of 20 to 30%, including the memory as well. So the RAM only stayed about sort of 40 percent ish when rendering. So really the limiting factor to this is actually its graphics card. So even though it's improved, it's still limiting its video editing or exporting capabilities. So that's really interesting to see. So maybe it's about time Apple had a dedicated graphics uh, version or upgrade to these models. Maybe next year, who knows, we'll have to wait and see. But definitely seeing a very good improvement compared to the MacBook Air. So one thing that I thought I would try is actually having two 4K clips side by side, as well as a clip in the background, just to really stress test this. I've only just thought of doing this. So let's test out the playback. And as you can see, I can't see any visible drop frames. Now there's no color correction on this, maybe one or two drop frames here and there, potentially in this clip I can see, but not too bad. And we've still got it set to better quality. Now let's add the color corrections onto it. So add that and add that onto there. And now let's see what the playback is like. So I'm seeing it a little bit more in terms of drop frames. So probably another one or two drop frames there. But if we set the performance 
to better performance on the quality setting, I think we should actually see much better playback. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, perfect. That is literally perfect. No drop frames at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's spot on. Let's play that again. Yeah, and scrubbing is nice on that as well. So yeah, so if you've got sort of three layers of potentially 4K footage, then it can handle it with a couple of color grades, but leave it on better performance and you'll have a smooth editing experience. Better quality might be pushing it just ever so slightly. I can see that the graphics is really working hard on this one. So again, the limitation with this is the graphics card. It just can't quite handle this type of footage. So next up, we've got a 20 second clip as you can see, and we're gonna do a stabilization test. So we're gonna see how quickly it can stabilize this footage. So we're gonna click on that footage over here and we're gonna stabilize at the same time. There you go. And we'll open this up and see how quickly it stabilizes this clip. Okay, so nearly finishing the stabilization. And there you go. So basically 40 seconds. So a 20 second clip takes about 40 seconds to stabilize. So very, very impressed with that. That's really, really good. Now the next step is to test its motion tracking capability. So I'm just going to grab a 10 second motion tracking clip over here. And then what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna track this little eye just over here and see how quickly it can track this particular object. So there you go. So we've got the motion tracking just over here and three, two, one. So coming up to the last 20 frames and there you go. So just over a minute, so a minute and seven seconds to stabilize that clip. Now let's have a look at the playback of this motion track. So we're going to set it to better quality. And remember, we've got stabilization turned on with no background rendering to this. Just remember, we're going to play it and see how smooth it is. So it's OK, definitely seeing a lot of drop frames for sure. So it's not the smoothest and now it's smooth with the motion tracking off, which is fine. Let's just see how it performs with better performance quality turned on and see if the motion is any better. Oh yeah, much better, much, much better. So it's definitely handling that absolutely fine in better performance. So one thing to note is if you're doing a lot of mocha tracking in in this software then i would probably recommend you put it into better performance and you should have a very smooth experience when editing and using these types of effects in better quality you'll notice for sure some dropped frames as you can sort of see when that line sort of comes up here can you see it's very very glitchy so if you're going to do anything like that then have it on better performance and you'll have a smooth editing experience. So really impressed with this overall. I mean, it's not going to be as quick as a dedicated graphics card uh, computer like the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but definitely usable. So what are my thoughts on this machine for video editing? Well, I think if you're doing moderate 4K video editing, then this machine will definitely handle it. As long as you're not doing sort of major motion effects, I mean, it can handle it as long as you set it to better performance rather than better quality, as the playback is pretty good on better performance rather than better quality, then I think that this machine will do fine. I mean, for me personally, for my work as well as YouTube, I do think that this machine is plenty for me. Now, is it as quick as a 16 inch MacBook Pro? No, of course not, because that has a dedicated GPU. And one thing I did notice is that even though the G7 graphics is a lot better than the older ones that we find in the older MacBook Pros, it is still a limitation in the MacBook Pro. So having a dedicated 
dedicated GPU like the 16 inch MacBook Pro will serve you better for video editing. But for 1800 pounds, this definitely does the job. And for me, it does the job absolutely fine. And I can still do my rendering and video editing with not many hiccups at all. But this was just a fun video for me as well as hopefully for you, because I think a lot of us do uh, video editing, but it also shows that if you're doing a lot more intensive tasks, uh, I think that this MacBook Pro will be able to handle it because the graphics card in this is probably its most limiting factor. And if it can still handle 4K video editing, then I think for your everyday tasks, it will be absolutely fine. Now, if you're doing any sort of rendering in Blender, for example, then I would say that you will be pushing this to its absolute max. And having something like an external GPU or the 16 inch MacBook Pro will serve you a lot, lot better. Now, for those of you who do photo editing or anything like that, this is more than enough because you don't really use the GPU much when you're video editing, more the CPU and RAM. So if you are looking at one of these, I would probably say invest in more RAM than I would, let's say, hire at CPU or anything like that, because that is really where you're gonna notice the difference. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion, so leave me a comment down below on what you thought of this experiment. And also, check out the links in the description below if you wanna support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at techcarmoon. Also, drop me a like and subscribe if you wanna support the channel. It really helps me out. Also, check out these videos here if you wanna see more of me. Anyway, everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.